is the Emergency Medical Minute. All right, guys, so let's talk about uh, traumatic cardiac arrest and uh, traumatic uh, uh, cardiac arrest resuscitation, specifically the question of when to do a resuscitative thoracotomy. Uh, this came up kind of as a question from a couple of people and I requested a medical minute on it. So first of all, why do we do resuscitative thoracotomies? What's the purpose? Yeah, well, it sort of falls into two, generally two or maybe three categories. So the first is to release emergently like a, a pericar traumatic pericardial tamponade or, uh, and then secondary, which is rare and can often be accomplished kind of by other means, depending on what the kind of the mechanisms are. And then the other thing is to selectively perfuse kind of brain and heart uh, and kind of exclude the circulation below the descending aorta. And that's more commonly why we do it, is really kind of hemorrhage control with attempt to selectively perfuse the brain. And so really, there are no randomized controlled trials of, of, uh, of resuscitative thoracotomies, and there never will be. Every, every decision we make about this is based on kind of people's experience and kind of retrospective reviews of various cases, things that went well and things that didn't. There are some case series that have been published that have kind of helped us delineate some general guidelines about it. But I think there's often a lot of skepticism about its efficacy just because it's done so infrequently and if you do something once every year or so, and the one that you do doesn't go well, then that's another four years potentially between before you get to think about seeing it or seeing it again or even seeing it potentially to work. In fact, there's a subset of patients for, for whom the outcomes are actually fairly good uh, in this procedure. And those are going to be selectively patients with penetrating traumatic mechanisms who have loss of vital signs in the emergency department. So if somebody comes in and they were shot in the chest and then in the ER they become pulseless, those patients unequivocally should have resuscitative thoracotomies. They actually have a fairly decent outcome. Patients who have the next sort of tier of survival would be patients who had vital signs at any time who have penetrating mechanisms. So we have an algorithm that we kind of, that actually Aaron Lesson and I put together and then was signed off on by the trauma service here that kind of um, speaks to this. And I'll, I'll, I'll keep it up here if people want to take a look at it. But it's on our website here and we can print it at any time anyone wants to take a look at it. But basically what we did was divide out people who had penetrating mechanism versus blunt mechanism. And in the penetrating mechanism group, did they have vital signs within the last sort of 10 minutes, basically, of, of, uh, uh, of when we see them? And if so, then do they have any, you know, kind of, uh, and, and, sorry, and, and so if it's been fewer than 10 minutes and it's penetrating mechanism, <laughs> we recommend doing a resuscitative thoracotomy on those patients. For patients for whom it's been greater than 10 minutes, and for, or maybe it's un, a little unsure, they're on scene, it was, the police took a, took a little while to clear the scene before EMS could get in, they get in there, and it's a little unclear if they actually had vital signs, at what point they had vital signs. You know, that's often what, what you're dealing with with a lot of these, you know, crime scene cases. Um, then do they have any signs of life in the ER? And that can be pupillary response, for example. And if so, then we, again, recommend a resuscitative thoracotomy. If, if it's been greater than 10 minutes and there are no signs of life in the emergency department, we recommend against doing a resuscitative thoracotomy. The likelihood of uh, recovery from that is so low with any kind of meaningful neurological intact survival that we kind of recommend against it. And then on the blunt mechanism side, which are much more common, of course, these are your car accidents, your falls, et cetera, et cetera, we don't recommend doing resuscitative thoracotomies unless there were signs of life in the emergency department. So signs of life in the emergency department at any point, and then you lose your vital signs, you may consider resuscitative thoracotomy kind of based on kind of the gut suspicion for what you think the actual cause of death is or loss of pulses is. If uh, no signs of life in the emergency department and the patient, for example, has blunt head trauma, we would definitely recommend against doing it. And then it can be very selectively considered, you know, in that other patient population. But I hope that that's helpful. We really think about it penetrating versus blunt. And if it's blunt, rarely, unless they had signs of life in the ER. If it's penetrating and 
um, had signs of life within 10 minutes of uh, when we see them, then we recommend doing it. If it's been more than 10 minutes, we generally recommend against doing it unless there's been some other sign of life that's ongoing, like pupillary responsiveness that would indicate some ongoing brainstem life. So does that make sense? And then one last thing, which is kind of a pet peeve of mine, I've talked about this a bunch of times before, but I'll say it again, is just the uh, craziness of doing CPR on trauma patients in the emergency department. I really, really, really recommend against doing it. If, if it's my patient and someone comes in and they're pulseless and someone's doing CPR, I'm gonna have them stop. Um, unless we think that the patient had a medical arrest. It makes no sense to do CPR in a trauma patient. It makes no sense. To, for CPR to have any effect, you have to have an intact circulatory tree and you have to have volume to circulate. And patients who survive traumatic, cardi or traumatic cardiac arrest are patients who have an easily reversible cause like pericardial tamponade or tension pneumothorax or who have exsanguinated but still have signs of life. So because of that, when someone comes in with a traumatic arrest, the steps of resuscitation should be very consistent and very limited. And so it should be airway, breathing, and circulation. So they should be intubated. If they're not intubated, they should immediately have a decompressive thoracostomy, so just a finger thoracostomies on both sides to, make, to relieve any tension pneumothorax and a quick ultrasound to see if they have a pericardial tamponade. And if the answer to all of those things is no, then you consider the resuscitative thoracotomy according to that algorithm I said before. But CPR does not play a role. So does that make sense? Because it just doesn't, it just makes no sense to press on the chest when there's no circulating blood volume or if they have a tension pneumothorax to press on the chest or something. So, Well, great. I hope that that was useful. And any questions about the resuscitative thoracotomy piece? It's a rare procedure. I think it's, it's exciting, but it's not without its risks to ourselves as well. And that's part of why we're, we're, um, we're cautious about it. Emergency Medical Minute is and always will be about free medical education. Medicine's most prolific podcast is successful because of our supporters, donors, and of course, our listeners. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you support spreading free medical education, please donate at our website, emergencymedicalminute.com. As always, keep listening.